Hi everyone, welcome to Rookie Awards 2021. Thanks for joining us again for another year. Can't actually believe we're back here again, starting things off each year. Things just keep coming around faster and faster, but we're super excited for this year again. My name's Andrew McDonald. I'm one of the co-founders here at The Rookies. And I'm Alan Hunt, the other co-founder, surprisingly. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. So, um, do you want to run us through, like, what is the Rookie Awards for all these people that uh, this might be their first time here? Yeah, so the Rookie Awards, um, for those newbies that are coming in this year, is a contest essentially for, for young people trying to get into creative industries like visual effects, like games, architecture, visualisation, um, a number of different categories that we are offering this year. Um, it's for, for people that are, you know, currently in school, maybe have graduated and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute but it's also for people that are teaching themselves um, we want to be able to create opportunities for you know more than just students yeah i think that's a super important point i mean our legacy was a contest for students only but in the last couple of years we have opened that up we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to participate in the Rookie Awards, so if you're a self-taught artist, whether you're a hobbyist, whether you're even at university or doing a course at um, a college, you're eligible to enter. The only people that we can't have enter the Rookie Awards, they're professionals. So the cutoff is a year of professional work. If you have been in the industry in any of these related fields, you can't enter if you've had 12 months of experience but the goal is we're trying to help aspiring artists, everyone who's trying to break into these competitive industries. So we wanna keep things fair. So keep that in mind, but any questions, just reach out to us. Um, and even if you've done some freelance work or contract work, but just make sure that entry that you're submitting to the Rookie Awards doesn't have any professional work on there. It's pretty obvious when we see company logos and stuff like that. So like Andrew said, we go through LinkedIn profiles and it's a case by case basis. If you think you're on the borderline, reach out. So why should you enter the Rookie Awards? We get asked this a lot, um, but there are a number of pretty big reasons, but one of the ones that I think is super important is exposure. It gives you an opportunity to get your work out there, and I think that's a big, important step. A lot of people actually are pretty, pretty intimidated about getting their work out there. This is a huge opportunity to get your work seen by loads of industry professionals and start building that confidence and that networking. Some of the career opportunities that we have, uh, you know, with some of the top studios around the world, you know, these, uh, you know, Epic Games, your Weta Digitals of the visual effects world, these are world-class companies and, you know, they're supporting the rookies by, you know, either through mentorship or through, um, you know, portfolio reviews or internships. So some amazing opportunities uh, for you to get your foot in the door, essentially. Um, Another nice one is certificates. We have, you know, we're trying to help you break into these industries. So it's one thing to have a portfolio, a resume, whatever it is. What we offer is an industry certified certificate, which actually gives you a bit of a ranking of where your skills are at. So based on the feedback um, or the reviews that you actually get from the judging panel, we actually then can award you a certificate, which you can then leverage off to take and use in your job interviews, which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And one of the biggest things for me, and it's not necessarily about the prizes or these career opportunities, but it's confidence. You know, what we're trying to do with the platform is give you confidence to be able to take that first step in getting your work seen on a global stage. You know, like it's really hard when you're a student, you know, working away, um, you're very self-critical and this is the opportunity for you to go, actually, you know what, I want to see where industry think I'm sitting. And it might be a first year student, you might be thinking, well, actually, what, what's the point for me? As a first year student, you know, you might submit one or two projects, but you're getting a ranking and a score from industry. So that's really giving you a benchmark of where they think you are right now. Another one that uh, some other people might find a little bit more important are the prizes. We have a huge lineup of prizes this year. Go check out the website to really list them all out. There's, there's simply too many to run through right now. But once again, this year, we've actually added in our Creative Media Starter Kit. This is a prize that's open to anyone. This isn't a prize for the people that are, you know, gonna win Rookie of the Year or win Film of the Year. This is just a random giveaway to encourage you to get involved. 
There's hardware, there's software, so you know you can think about you know your sort of your, your licensing, whether it's Maya, Max, whether it's um, you know a Wacom tablet. You know it really is an amazing starter pack for somebody that's getting into this industry. Like Andrew said, it's a complete random winner. So again, it could be a first year student that is coming in. Um, they get the opportunity to enter into this um, into this starter kit. So. This year we've had to sort of be a little bit more creative in terms of internships because a lot of studios around the world can't offer you know, in-house internships. There are some and we do have some this year which is fantastic. Um, you know, we're to digital, uh, there's Ninja Theory which is a gaming studio based in the UK that are able to offer up a, in, an internship um, in, on in-house which is amazing. Um, some of the other opportunities are mentorships. So we've got a lot of studios that are going to be giving up their time to be able to mentor you. So for example, one hour a week for a period of time, and that could be four to eight weeks, where you get to come online with somebody from that studio, and they're going to talk to you about you know, what it's like to work in the industry. They're going to give you some feedback about your work. They're going to get you involved in projects that are part of that studio. It really is a, an amazing opportunity to be able to see the inside workings of, of studios. So like Andrew said, we've got a, a really good um, list of studios and it's not you know, just visual effects and games. We've got studios that are design companies. We've got um, architectural firms that are also offering up these types of opportunities. So it's right across the board. So key dates for this year's Rookie Awards, it's exactly the same as last year. We launch March the 7th. Um, it runs through until June the 1st, and that's when, during that period, you can at any stage submit your entry into the Rookie Awards. Um, and then, you know, come June the 30th, that's when we announce uh, the finalists, the overall finalists. So last year, we, I think we had almost 4,000 entries. So there's a lot of entries to get through. Um, so we have that window to be able to then sort through the finalists. Uh, we bring in, you know, our, our finalist judges. And then on July 16th, that's when we announce the overall winners. Yeah. Even though you've got a while to enter, you've got up until June the 1st, don't leave it to the last minute. There's things to do, there's videos to upload. There's just, just give yourself that time to get it in early. Um, there's, you know, we've got at least 10 weeks um, available for you to get your entry there. So try not to leave it to the last minute. That's probably the biggest bit of advice I could actually give. So categories, we have a load of them. Um, we basically break these down into a, a what, five different groups. So our main group is called Rookie of the Year. This is open to individual artists. These are people that really wanna sort of already know what they wanna specialize. We have, what have we got, nine this year. We've got nine categories for Rookie of the Year, which cross everything from 3D animation, concept art, arc viz, uh, motion design. We've got a bit of something for everyone, right? So the, the way we break these categories down for Rookie of the Year, is we look at it as an industry, where you want to head. If you want to head down and try and get into ArcViz or immersive media or concept art, pick that industry and then share the greatest projects that you've been working on, share your knowledge. Um, basically, we want you to build this perfect entry page that showcases your skill, your understanding of these industries. And that's what's gonna be used to be sent and presented to our judging panel. So there, as much as say something like visual effects, it has a lot of disciplines. It has everything from layout and modeling through to lighting and compositing. We need everyone who's interested in that industry to submit their work and we can actually get the specific judges to go and find who they think is really the rookie of the year for those categories. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, we're gonna to touch a little bit more on what is the perfect entry in a, in a bit. Um, but just to add to that, you know, like Andrew said, when you're putting your work in, you know, make sure that that presentation of that entry, you know, is including a description of exactly, you know, what you've done. Sometimes we get entries um, that are just images or just a video, and it's really hard for judges to be able to you know, just dissect and actually work out what you've done. So adding some, you know, text in there and, you know, really explaining yourself. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, you're selling yourself to these recruiters. So you need to make sure that you're thinking about this um, in that entry. So a couple of the other groups that we've got, we've got Film of the Year, 
game of the year and specialty. So film of the year, this is actually open to teams and individuals. We have some pretty incredible individual artists that go off and create their own um, full short film, which is pretty impressive. But this film of the year and game of the year really is kind of targeted towards more of the team projects. So um, there's a bit of it, everything in there um, across from visual effects, 2D animation, 3D animation. And then in games, we've got sort of your PC console, your mobile, and again, we've sort of got an immersive media category. So depending on what project or film or game you've been working on, pick the category that works for you. Go check out the entries from last year. It'll give you a really good idea of how to present um, your entries to that. We're obviously, hopefully looking for finished films and games, but often we'll actually get people that actually aren't completed yet. They don't have their film or game finished yet. That's fine. Show us a trailer, share what you've got, um, really put a bit of effort into it. Um, we do have really good entries that come through and we've got great reference for you to go and check out. So make sure to have a look and put a lot of sort of time and effort into that page to just show off what you've been doing. If that means you have to kind of do something like this and get a little video together to present your idea and your game because you're still working on it, go ahead, do it. Yeah. Um, one thing to note here as well, sometimes we get you know, schools around the world that really do focus on short films or project-based uh, assignments. Now, if you want to be going into the running for Rookie of the, Rookie of the Year, uh, which is that, those previous categories that we mentioned, then it's, you know, it's something to think about is maybe looking at these short films or projects that you've team-based projects that you've worked on, and it's actually extracting your work to create your own unique entry for Rookie of the Year awards. Um, we get a lot of, a lot of uh, schools that do this and um, you know, the, the thing to note here is that these, uh, these categories don't actually factor into the school rankings, which we're going to talk a little bit about later on, so I don't want to confuse it too much here, but just note that you know, it's a good idea to take your work out and you know, then enter into the Rookie of the Year uh, categories. Yeah, it's a really good tip. I mean, one thing we actually recommend with Film of the Year and Game of the Year is that you select one of your team members to create that entry. That entry, when the person comes through and actually creates that, they'll be able to tag everyone else as a collaborator. That gets you sort of in the spotlight as well and it um, will appear on your portfolio page as well. So just select one person, help them build the greatest page, submit that, but then make sure to go, as Alan said, and create your own Rookie of the Year category because it really it's about not just sharing that film or game, it's sharing like what you did, what you contributed, whether it was the animation or the lighting or the tech, whatever it is, share what you did for that film as well. The final sort of um, category we've got there is a Young Guns category. This is actually open to um, kids between the age of 13 and 18. The idea with this one is these are just, you know, if you're sort of thinking about sort of you've got an interest in, in creating content for these industries, but you're not too sure yet, you're playing around with sort of drawing and a bit of 3D, maybe whatever it is, building things, getting creative, this is kind of the category for you. So um, yeah, we've got something for you, but just share. There's no real brief here. We just want to see enthusiasm, passion, a bit of skill, obviously helps, but yeah, whatever you want to throw in there, um, share it with us, we'd love to see it. Yeah. All right, so how do you enter this contest? I mean, it's a, we probably should have even started with that maybe a bit earlier. One of the, you've obviously got to get across to the website. We're at therookies.co forward slash rookie awards. So how do you enter the Rookie Awards? It's pretty straightforward. We've obviously got a landing page on our website that runs through everything. One of the biggest things and probably the most important steps is read the rules. Okay, so how do you enter the Rookie Awards? It's pretty simple, but the most important step you need to do is read the rules. They're not too full on, don't get sort of intimidated by them. We just wanna make sure you're eligible, you understand what's going on. A lot of people jump in, get a little bit too excited and just start clicking randomly and creating an entry. So make sure to read the rules, check you're eligible and read through just to make sure you are able to enter. Once you've done that, we want you to then jump in and find out which group you want to enter from Rookie of the Year, Film of the Year, Game of the Year, or our specialty category. You wanna sort of figure out what that group is to start with. Once you've done that, 
really dig in and start finding out what category you want to dig into whether that's the visual effects, animation, games. Really jump in and read. Every one of those categories has a very specific brief. So once again, just take a little bit of time to read that brief. We've really gone into details. There's videos there as well to really explain what's going on. As I've mentioned before, go and check out some of the entries from last year. It's really helpful to see what the winners did and sort of how people have built those pages. So once you've actually done that, it's a really simple process of just collecting all your greatest sort of projects, images, videos, um, just basically build a page. That page is that it's just gonna showcase your work. It's what you're gonna present to our judges. So kind of treat it like a job interview. Like, you know, even if you're not looking for a job just yet, this is a great opportunity just to start thinking about what you want to present. You've created all these projects, done hundreds of drawings, really try and be self-critical and find the best work that you've created and build a page that shows off your skill. Um, the page builder is pretty slick. It gives you all the options to do videos, images, text, um, even code from GitHub. There's a, a 3D viewers. We've got a couple of other sort of custom things in there. So um, maybe have a play with them, um, even build a project and do a test one somewhere else if you're sort of a bit unsure. But there are videos there that run through everything. So take your time and yeah, create something that really shows off your skill. So this year, what we've done with the categories is try to lock them down a bit. Previously, we've had people enter and just create all sorts of different entries and kind of not really do themselves any favor. So what we wanna do, and this is why we're really trying to make sure you pick your category. Really think about which industry you wanna head for and focus on that. If you're entering 3D animation, we don't wanna see your architectural vis visualization. We don't really wanna see your concept art. This is you applying essentially for a job in 3D animation. That's what we wanna see. So we've really locked down um, the limits here. Previously, we sort of let everyone maybe enter a couple of entries, but this year, you literally get one entry into these specific categories. Um, there's great new controls there, so you won't be able to inadvertently enter something that you can't. It'll be quite straightforward. But as always, just reach out if you're a little unsure. If you're halfway through an entry and just have a question or need to stop, just save a draft and we'll be able to get back into it. But yeah, really lock down your decision early, gather your work, and then let's get that on the page. I'm just gonna pick up on one thing you said there was the draft, right? So when you're creating your entry, you get the option to be able to save it as a draft, like Andrew mentioned, or publish it. When you publish it, you're locking down your entry, you're notifying the judges, hey, I'm done, I'm ready to get my entry judged, right? So. Um, just be aware of that, you know, like we, if you're thinking, hey, you know what, I'm just, you know, creating, going through, I'm just creating my entry, maybe I'm going to add some more stuff a little bit later on, maybe I haven't quite finished this project and I want to add it, then just save it as a draft. It's better to save it as a draft because once, once you've published, it's gone. It. Um, so yeah, just yeah, one thing to note there. Point. That's a very good point. So one of the big questions that we often get asked is, you know, why should I enter I'm not gonna win. Like I've seen the quality of this work that these other people enter. Look, this is, and we touched on this earlier, this is all these reasons in terms of building confidence and you know, basically just trying to get you to start sharing your work. It's a huge thing. We're, we've been there, we've been artists. Like we understand what it's like to share your work. It's intimidating. It's crazy. Like it's something that you put so much effort into, but to get it out there is a big deal. This is your chance to just start with that. Every artist knows, they know that they can actually do better, but the more you do this and the more you get comfortable with sharing your work, it's gonna build that confidence and you're gonna realize it's not a big, big deal. You're gonna get that feedback, you're gonna improve. So please just don't come to us saying, I'm not gonna win. Like we've got opportunities, you can still win prizes, but it really is, building that network, building that confidence, and really just trying to get yourself out. 
So if you have any questions about the Rookie Awards or even the Rookies platform in general, we have a couple of different uh, platforms or avenues that you can contact us on. If you go on the Rookies website, we have a little chat system down the bottom in the right hand corner that you can just type in a message and those messages will come to us. We also have a really vibrant Discord channel, uh, server, sorry. And you know, this is a, a really great area for people that are first starting out, or even if you've got some problems with some of your projects, it's a great environment to, to be able to tap into some of our industry professionals that are part of that. Um, we also have our you know, different contests, channels that we're able to give feedback or answer questions in there as well. So um, we, if you need to join up to our Discord and you're not part of it, again, go to therookies.co. Down the bottom and there's a link, you'll see Discord down there and you can jump on our Discord server. So once again, for the Rookie Awards, we are very honored to be supported by a lot of great companies not only hardware, software, but studios as well. These guys support the Rookie Awards, but more importantly, they're supporting the next generation of young people on their journey. You know, whether it's through prizes or hardware or these career opportunities that we're gonna talk about, it's without their support that the Rookies wouldn't be here today without them. Absolutely. So make sure, I mean, there's a whole bunch of sponsors on this year that maybe you don't know who they are, you're new to these industries. Have a look, go check out what they're doing. They're doing incredible things. It doesn't matter, as Alan said, whether they're just a studio or they're doing software or hardware. These companies are here and you should know about them. So go follow them, check out what they're doing. They're here supporting us and it's for you. So go have a look. Nothing that really explains your passion, your interest, how you created it, what you did. Did you work with someone? Did you get an asset from somewhere and take it to the next level? We want you to kind of present that to the judges. Don't just throw things on. That's gonna be one of the most important things you can do to create that perfect entry. Outside of that, we've already done these contests. This is our 11th one. We have 11 years worth of other entrants that have submitted their work. So why not go back, have a look at who won, maybe check out their page. You can see that people really have spent a lot of time building these pages. They've broken it up into sections, into different projects with their headings and supporting material. There's, there's everything's there to go and have a look at what impressed the judges before. So take a bit of time and, and try and replicate that. So as Alan said, you can get involved. We wanna see your work.